Hi, this is Retro Gaming Dads. I'm Phil, one of the three aging gamers that are talking about games and tech and generally retro things. We also have Anthony and Barry with us today. Hi, love. Hi, oh, yeah. I, I, I don't know why I'm being thrown into aging here. It's, <laughs> it's, just, it's just to make himself feel a bit better, that's all. Hey, no, he's in his it, 30s now. He's the old one. <laughs> what, since, since I'm six, seven years younger than you both? You're in your 30s, it counts. Currently, we've been in this podcast for less than 30 seconds, and we're already arguing what a brilliant start this is going to be. I mean, that's why people watch podcasts, isn't it? Well, it, it certainly is. <laughs> it's um, a sign of, uh, you know, friendships have been able to have a dig and argue with each other, and carry on with it. Anyway, old games, that's what we're talking, right? Yes, we're here to talk about retro and retro-inspired games and tech. And... Since this year is coming to an end, we thought we'd come up with the original idea of taking a look back over the dumpster fire of the year 2020 has been and talk about our favourite retro games and retro tech. I see. We're, 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 we're great with the original ideas, aren't we? Absolutely. Didn't steal this from every other podcast available online. Yes. So I suppose collectively, um, one one game that we've all played and that came out at a really good time since we were all stuck in our house and couldn't go outside. Um, Streets of Rage 4? Yes. Can you believe that came out eight months ago now? Really? I, you know yeah. what? I genuinely thought it was last year. But last year. <laughs> it felt like a longer, long, it felt longer it, ago. Brilliant. It game, has though. been a long year. That it has. I mean, who would have thought that, you know, March the 780th has finally come to an end. Yes. Uh, it's, a, it's a bit like the scene in Wally, where the, what is it, like 900 years into the six month voyage? <laughs> Which? Fine. Anyway, well, well, Streets of Rage. Yes, so uh, we've all played it. We've all completed it. I got my ass handed to me. Um, we've all team killed each other. Yes. So, what, what what's our thoughts about it? Well,. I think we could say the first team kill was done by um, Phil, as it always is. That's not true. I'm pretty sure it was Barry. <laughs> Don't blame me. And I'm pretty sure the last time that we uh, we were playing, I believe your exact words were, this is where someone team kills as you were beating the crap out of me. <laughs> no, that doesn't sound about right. <laughs> Funny it sounds like you, night, definitely. If only. The big question, was it worth nearly three decades wait? I mean, it would have been nice if it came a bit sooner, but I enjoyed it. It was a decent game. It was, nice, it was a nice blast to the from the past. It was yeah. a nice but to pick up and play again. Um, it did seem it was refined, you know, and I didn't feel like there was any issue with the gameplay. I thought the gameplay oh, was no. fantastic. There is an issue with the game, the elevator and those karate guys. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was not an issue with the game. Yeah, who who puts more. brittle glass walls on an elevator? I mean, come on, <laughs> it's not very realistic. It was nice to actually have Adam back as well. Yeah, um, he's been absent as playable character since the original one back in 92, I want to say it was. Best character. Um, if I'm honest. So I, I played 2, but I never played the original one. Streets of Rage I'm... 2 is considered to be the best of the original trilogy, definitely. Uh, Streets of Rage 3 was more of the same, um, but just difficulty was far too high over here in the West. Because clearly um, we're the better gamers, right? That's why they made it harder. <laughs> no, it, it, it's because they didn't want us renting it from Blockbuster. Please, if please. anyone out there remembers Blockbuster. Oh, that company that I could have bought Blockbuster. Blockbuster a couple of times. Yeah, I know. You, you were too young to remember it, I think. Me? Blockbuster? <laughs> I, I grew up using Blockbuster. I don't, I, okay, I'm young, but not that young. Compared to you two. Blockbuster, <laughs> nothing, the amount of stuff we them got from there. Blockbuster was my go-to place. Well, the reason for the difficulty spike over in the West is they were worried people would just rent it from Blockbuster for the weekend, can play it, complete it, and never actually purchase the game. Companies like Nintendo and Sega did actually make some games harder or pa- artificially pad them out so you couldn't complete them in such a short amount of time. That way you would actually have to go out, purchase the game, um, so if you do play Bare Knuckle 3, the Japanese version, um, apart from a, an extra character, the infamous Ash, um, the game's actually a lot more balanced than what we ever got. Yeah, wasn't he removed for being too risque? <laughs> um, that's one way to put it. 
Um, he does make a cameo, actually, in Streets of Rage 4. Uh, during one of the boss scenes, there's a calendar, and uh, he's posing on the calendar in the background. Fair enough. Take that's one you'd have to actually look for. Uh, yes. Yeah. It's one of those as well. If you didn't know who the character was, um, you'd probably see it and just think nothing of it either. But that, that's one thing I like that they did in Streets of Rage 4, was that there was a few hidden areas in there where you would be able to go to the you know old, older style graphics and complete a bonus mission or a bonus bit of a stage you know set as that and i quite enjoyed that as well it gave you a bit of a nostalgia back to it as well i felt yeah that that was nice and um, one thing that was a shame that was missing from the xbox version was the pixelated um graphics option them why was that missing uh- I don't know, but the window, uh, the version for Windows 10 and the Xbox were done by a different uh, development company than the Switch and the PlayStation 4 oh. versions. So it's probably just maybe an oversight. Maybe it's been patched back into the game. Um, I haven't looked since the first couple of days the game came out. Because but that, we just kind of played it nice... thought it's not there. Yeah, yeah, but that added a nice little retro feel, and it automatically enabled on the Switch whenever you did go back and fight any of those previous bosses. Hang on, I'm sure when I was playing, I was able to switch between them, but maybe I'm just maybe I'm thinking of the bonus mission I came across. Um, I, I don't know. Again, maybe it's been patched in since. Maybe. So, overall, do you think it was a positively received game? Yeah, I'd say so. I, I mean, generally, it was a. It was a good game. It was an enjoyable couch couch co op, even. Not that you yeah, can really just... play couch co ops this year. <laughs> yeah. Imagine not seeing another person. That's the thing, because the game, it's two player online only, but then is it three player on X or so it's the other way around? Four, four player. player locally. First Streets of Rage, that's four, four player. player local, and then two player online. Yes. Which I don't understand that. Surely it should be four player online as well. Um, I- I'm guessing again, it's probably something down to. Netcode developer, maybe like just trying to get yeah netcode as Phil just said. But I just I I wish it could have been four player online. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, Especially for doing the boss rush. Oh, that is brutal. Brutal, I don't think I've managed to get past about the second or third boss in boss rush yet. No, I think I think we the third furthest we got was about the second or third, and that yeah, (sighs) ouch. Don't wanna. No, no, you go on, you go on. Oh no, I was just gonna say it was brutal. Yeah, it was just. (laughs) See, I was, I was going to take a tangent onto a different game since we spent a while talking about Street of Rage. I quite enjoyed... And yet we didn't actually say anything about it. <laughs> we said a little bit about it. Um, I've quite enjoyed Katana Zero as a bit of a retro-inspired game. Um, first game I played on my Series X as well. The difference is a genre, because you hit, you hit the game in separate segments, because I know you two haven't played it too much. Well, I've not, I've played, not played the game at all. <laughs> there you go, it's just you then. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, basically, the way it works is you enter the area, you've got to get from one point to another point in there to progress the mission. And it's done in, like, 20 second segments. And if you die, you rewind back to the beginning of that section. And then at the end of it, it plays through at real time. But you have the ability to slow time and manipulate time a little bit. So it can make you look like you've done some really, really classy things. It's, it's, a, it's a fun game. It's definitely worth playing. It's got a really interesting story. So I'd highly recommend that one to you. So basically, this game is a tool-assisted run built into yes. it, yeah? Yes. It, yeah, that's that's a good way of putting at it. It's, it's good. It's heavily reflex-based. So if an enemy's coming at you, you've got to time your attack right so that you don't get killed or you deflect their attack, etc. Or you dodge it in time. It's one to play. Absolutely one to play. If not, just for the storyline. It Basically, if you're the sort of person who panics and someone's coming to attack you, you're screwed. Oh yeah, well and truly. Yeah. <laughs> and there are, there are moments where you've got two enemies running at you, one enemy shooting at you, and you've got to try and react to it all in the right way. And you end up panicking and dying and then rewinding. Especially when it's like the last section of that room and you've almost finished it and you're the 20th try and you're ready to throw your controller at the wall. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's good. I'm frustrating. So if you've got a three control oh. the wall, it's great. Yeah, play. I have to give yeah. it a go. Is that on a Game Pass, is it? Or? Yes, yeah, it's on Game Pass. When I tried out on Game Pass, yeah. Might have to give it a try then. Right, and is that on the Xbox or the PC, do you know? I don't know if it's on Game Pass on the PC, but it definitely is on the Xbox. Right. I probably should have checked that, really. 
<laughs> Being prepared. Yeah. It's overrated. <laughs> but moving on to the next sort of retro inspired game for me has to be um, Undermine. I know we've all played it. Um, and it's a game that I've really, you know, gripped and I've really enjoyed playing. And it's one that I could easily go back to. Yeah, I, I played that. I think I was playing that quite a bit before you two started playing it. I enjoyed that one. It is a fun game. It reminds me a lot of Rogue Legacy. Yeah, it's kind of like a, a Zelda roguelite. <laughs> but it's it's like it's it's one as well. I can easily go back to it, and you know, you you can play through a bit of a dungeon, so you can spend ten minutes on it and then go away from it. It's not one that you have to sit there and play for quite a while, and you know, you kind of the pr- progress. I feel like is very consistent. It's not an overly hard game unless you obviously progress down through the dungeon. But then it, it's one is where. As long as you play it right, you can go quite far and it won't be a massive issue. But again, it's one of those games where, as you say, you can dip in for 10 minutes. But I'll go in, play it for 10 minutes and think, ah, ah another room. Oh, just just another run. Just one more run. And then I'll get through and I'm like, ah, I nearly get that upgrade. So just just, just one more run. The Minecraft yeah, effect. It's, 10 yeah, more minutes hard, turns just... into 12 hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, like, because it's one that's where, um, you know, a few times where I'm getting ready for work in the morning, I'm like, oh, I've got, I've got 15 minutes before I have to leave, and I sit down and I'm looking at the time, <laughs> I look up at the time, I'm like, shoot, we're gonna go, leg out the door, because I just kind of got lost in it. This is one you can easily get lost in. I found. Yeah, it's 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 definitely a good uh, yeah, yeah. a good time sink, but at least you feel like you're progressing, even though it's yes. a roguelike. Um, you're not losing everything each time. You are progressing stuff. No, and that's the thing. If you, it's one of those. It is unforgiving. Where a couple of wrong moves will just kill you if you're not paying attention. You'll just die, or you can be lucky enough to get a curse where you lose all your gold, which is even worse. But you know. Oh yeah, and it's it's always heartbreaking to see when your character dies and all your <laughs> relics go flying out and, and all gold your gold bouncing around, and you're like, yeah, no. those little slimes are running in, just pilfering everything, and you're like, no, why? It's I was so close. <laughs> that, 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 that was the rest of the money towards my actual grade you did. <laughs> oh, thank God for that canary. At least it gets some of you. See, I, I didn't use the canary, Reggie. but the canary was oh, pretty yeah. good. And I can't even remember which one I was using now. Well, the canary is the default one. I was yeah. looking at changing the canary, but I prefer, I like the canary too much. The, uh, there's, a, yeah. there's, a, there's a genie. The genie is great because it points at the walls you can blow up. Yeah, as if those big... Giant cracks in them, and the sparkles weren't enough to give them away. <laughs> the yeah, sparkles gives away completely yeah. for me. Yeah. Where is that? Speaking of which, um, has anyone been playing the new Hyrule Warriors? Oh, I played the demo. Absolutely loved it. Um, I really enjoyed it, and it's you know I would what? like to pick it up. Um, the to specify to specify, obviously, it's Hyrule Warriors: Age of Calamity, which it is. But I've I've really enjoyed it. I I think it's a game that you can really drop into, and I am a big fan of Dynasty Warriors I never got into the Dynasty Warrior style games. I, you know, I was a early 20s teenager when the first Dynasty Warriors were coming out and it was all the rage, these big massive pitched battles where you're massacring everybody. I just never got into them. I must admit, sometimes I enjoyed them blow off a bit of steam. We did play a it was like a chibi version on the GameCube, didn't we? What was it called? Like Oh! Dynasty Quest or something? I can't think. But uh, when the Xbox 360 came out, I played quite a bit of um, 99. Yeah, you enjoyed that one, didn't you? Similar sort of game. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, one of my... One of my the reason I like sort of Dinosaur Warriors style games so much is because one of my favourite games was um, Dinosaur Warriors Gundam. And so I played that quite a lot. And so that's got my passion for Dinosaur Warriors Dinosaur Warriors style games. So playing Hyrule Warriors just kind of redoing this the... for myself at least. And so, you know, just just running around, just going in as a link, we have to wipe out a load of enemies. Oh, to me, Gundam Games badass. has got to be Gundam on the Dreamcast. That was a brilliant. Oh, uh, Gundam yeah. side story. Oh, I want to say it's like 007 like or that. something. It's like probably that. aged terribly, and if I went back yeah. to it, I'd realise just how awful it actually was. Oh, yeah. Yes, it has. I look back at it probably like uh I don't know about a year or two ago because I remember it looking I... impressive. Good, the graphics are amazing because you had that little um, little armored personnel carrier that followed you around. You're like, oh, please, for the love of God, yeah. don't stand on it! Don't stand on it! Don't stand on it! Yeah, I went back and watched um, a let's play a 
through some Dreamcast games, and that was one of them. And I was like, oh, wow, that's that's looking a bit rough now. See, as, as you know, obviously, Gundam is one of my favorite all time favorite things. Um, but I never had a Dreamcast, that's that game I never played. Um, growing up, my first console was a probably PlayStation or it was the handheld Sega console sort of thing. Uh, you know, that was sort of the earliest game console I, I remember playing on. So, a Dreamcast. I'm surprised we didn't hear Barry shouting over the top Game Gear, Game Gear. That's what it was. I couldn't quite call it. What, as in, uh, as in the first console or as in like Sega's 30th anniversary Game Gear console from this year, which is so small that you can't actually see the screen? <laughs> the, what, the one that fits in the yeah. palm of your hand? Palm of your hand? It's about that the size of your Sounds like a design flaw. Oh, no. mm, yeah, they, they, they're not supposed to be as serious micro console um yeah but you want to at least see the screen yes well if you buy the pack of four different consoles you do get the magnifying glass (laughs) oh my days so even the screen size of your thumb you can get magnifying glass it's like going back to gaming of old where you had your game boy you had your printer attachment on the bottom you had your microphone attachment on the top you had your speaker attachment on the sides so that your handheld console needed an entire cart to carry it around and it had the little so, tiny lights which attempted yeah. to light the screen off. <laughs> I remember having, um, for my Game Boy, I remember having a attachment which had a magnifying glass with a light t- uh, fit into it. So you stuffed yeah. the magnifying glass, stuffed it on top. I want to say that's flick, called the hand, look, something Handy like Boy, is it? I just, I just remember that, having that, and I remember it, you know, bedtime. You know, I'll go to bed and <laughs> I'm quickly sneaking into my bed so I can play it at night time <laughs> without a parent's note. I remember playing Pokemon on the original Game Boy and like angling it because I got a bit of street light through yeah, my window. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, <laughs> trying to trying to collect the last little photon <laughs> of light just so I can see that this little green screen. See, of course, in high school, we were the cool kids sat with our Game Boys playing Pokemon because that was totally cool back in the 90s. Oh, yeah, definitely in the 90s. That's, you know. No. <laughs> no, I think growing up, I remember going through a lot of different phases, and like I said, Pokemon and Pokemon cards are mass thing. And then you know, if you want to go any more, it's like Yu-Gi-Oh. They came out there with Yu-Gi-Oh cards, and there's Beyblades, and everyone's taking Beyblades to school, and pushing stuff the bins into the have battling them, and oh, flipping it, the amount of phases and fads I went through at school. See, literally, the only ones I can remember from school was Yo-Yos and Pokemon. Tamagotchis. <laughs> oh, ah, oh, do you know? Do you know what? Oh, you can't hear it, but that is my Tamagotchi. I've got it in my hand right now. <laughs> do, do you remember what happened? Oh, wait, to my how Tamagotchi? old is that Tamagotchi? Um, I don't know. Did it probably die during a test or no, something? No, it died at three in the morning one day when it woke me up, and I decided I had enough of it chirping and took my screwdriver to it uh, to take the batteries out or to brutally accelerate. Oh no, I brutally accelerated his death. Did he, did he stab through it? No, I didn't stab through it. I undid all the screws, every single one. I took it to bits and then destroyed it bits. <laughs> <sighs> so you, you didn't just destroy it, you, you, you know, mangled yes, it. Yes, I mangled it. I destroyed it. He wanted your love and attention. You were like, Three stop this. in the morning. I gave it a merciful end. <laughs> what, by taking it apart from your side out? <laughs> oh, dear. Well, while we're roughly on the... Um topic of Game Boys. Has anyone heard of the company called Analog? They do um, really high-end reproduction games consoles? No? Um, So they are releasing a Game Boy-esque console called the Analog Pocket. It's $200, so it isn't cheap, and it looks like a really high-end Game Boy. You know the resolution on the Game Boy. You know, it's pretty low. It was, I think it was something roughly 160 by 126 resolution. So this company thought, I don't know, let's make ours. 1,600 by 1,440. On such so, a small screen. <laughs> on such a small screen, yes. Three and a half inch screen, if I remember wow. right. You'll be, um, be able to tell... The astounding graphical details, can't you know? Well, I think it's roughly 10 times the resolution of the original Game Boy in both Jeez. axes. Um, but apart from playing 
Game Boy games, you know, which is a good start for a console. Um, it can also play most other handhelds. Right. They're releasing adapter cartridges, which will allow you to play um, Game Gear, Neo Geo oh, Pocket Color, I love that. and Atari Lynx. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> do you like the um, Neo Geo Pocket for the exact same reason I do? The clicky stick? No, I, I, I like the when I... games on it because, like, Capcom Card Fighters or something. No, Capcom vs. SNK Card Fighters. I was going to ask. There's Capcom vs. SNK Card Fighters, and I've played that. Oh, SNK. Right, yeah. Uh, Capcom, uh, sorry, SNK versus Capcom, because it was an SNK console. Yeah. Um, Match in the Millennium, fantastic handheld, beat them up, loads of mini games, great little game. But that clicky stick really did make playing beat em ups an absolute pleasure. Well, that's because it was an SNK device. They they yes. knew beat em ups, and they knew oh, they did, all of beat em ups. Even um, Sonic's Pocket Adventure. It's fantastic playing 2D games with that little um, micro-switched fun pad. I can't even think what you'd call it. Yeah. It's not an analog stick. It's not a D-pad. It's something in between, but it's so satisfying to use. Brilliant bit of hardware. That is for sure. But, this is where you can tell the difference in age between us, because this is just going over my head. <laughs> <laughs> You're missing out. It was. It didn't sell very well. Yes, hence why it was dead within about a year. Yeah. But it's something that I, I like. It's a concept that I, if I'm honest, haven't even Well, heard of. SNK released a few consoles because they did the, the Neo Geo Color, which was basically an arcade cabinet in your home. And it had some brilliant arcade games on there. But it cost a fortune. And the games cost a fortune for it as well. Oh, yeah. It was essentially an arcade board. And it took the same ROM cartridges. Yeah. Or at least very similarly. You could actually get an adapter to use the arcade ROMs. Yeah. Straight in it. Uh, They did bring out a CD version, though, later on, which was significantly cheaper, but still a lot more expensive than like contemporaries like the PlayStation and the Sega Saturn. Yeah. And... Then they brought out, well, they, before they did that, they had the standard Neo Geo, which was black and white, didn't they? Um, oh, the Neo Geo Pocket. Yeah, the Neo Geo Pocket. Yes, that that was out such a short amount of time, though, that it's less common than the colour version. Yeah, but the the Pocket and the colour, they were brilliant consoles, brilliant games. They just, yeah. they never went anywhere. King of Fighters R2 as well, fantastic beat up Yeah. Which is a shame, because it is what caused SNK to die and to be eventually picked up by Capcom. I see King of Fighters, another game. Like they, they, they suck a joint now. <laughs> I, I can, I, yes, know, King of Fighters. The Neo Geo, whatever console there, but it's cheap, you know. King of Fighters, which, game, um, yes. oddly enough, King of Fighters 13 is uh, one of the games with gold on the Xbox. Sadly, isn't it awful, that one? I don't know. Um, I must admit it's 95, 96, 98. They're, they're my go-to King of Fighters games. That's because they're the good ones. Yes, they are. But they're Except the ones. King of Fighters 95, I have on the Saturn, and I lost the ROM cartridge. Ooh. It's one of the few Sega Saturn games, which part of the game is actually on a cartridge. Oy. Um, And you can't play so without it's it. Yeah. Yes. It's, it is a shame because SNK were probably the closest competitor Capcom had for the 2D fighting genre. Certainly at the time, anyway. Barry, did you finish talking about the uh, the you know Game Boy remake? From this other <laughs> I'll be honest, I don't even think I really got started before we uh, swiftly got <laughs> sidetracked. <laughs> I don't think so either. Um, you kind of started going into it. Start, start, start going on to it. And then as soon as you said about the uh, other console, it feels like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So, question is: Would a, even though it's a really high end, I believe it's like metal and glass. Um, would a Game Boy console be worth two hundred dollars? No. In today's day? no. My it only question doesn't is: Doesn't play okay. ROMs. So, plays the original cartridge. Does it? No. I was about to say: Do it play anything other than cartridges? No, just and cartridges. You need the yeah, original you cartridges. When you buy it, you just get. The- the handheld on that when you can, I believe so. When you can spend There's definitely 60 quid, quid, quid and get a Chinese copy console that can play the original cons- cartridges, has a decent quality screen, <sighs> no, I don't think it can. I mean, I'm sorry, okay, you pay an extra 50 quid and you're looking to get, you know, what, new consoles? Well, you don't even need to so spend that. You, know, you can get a Switch for, you know, a bit more than 200 quid. Get so why would you get a Series S for 250 okay. That's not, sorry, that's not, for another 50 quid, you're getting a console. 
Yes, but the, the, these are obviously aimed at different people, aren't they? they are. So they if, are. for a start, a Series S, um, you're not getting that to play Pokemon, you know, for example, no, or to play King of Fighters R2 with the adapter, or even to play wherever the hell came out on the Atari Lynx. Um it's it's not aimed at the same people. Even comparing it against Switch is completely disingenuous to it because, again, it's it's a different set of games. I think it's one of those where... Yeah, because the Switch is obviously won't play the retro sort of older games, whereas this would... It's probably the nicheness of it. It is going to be aiming for a fairly niche market. Even that, Absolutely. that Poly Mega, that's probably going to... Well, be a market well yes. <laughs> I have something to say about the Poly Mega. <laughs> yeah, I believe they love you over on Facebook. None of it's good. Wait, why? What's oh. happening here? Is this, oh, is this what you're leading early? I want to know. I want to know. Well, yeah, so Polymega, really excited about it. For those that don't know, um, it used to be called, I want to say, Retroblox. And basically, it's a console that has a disk drive in it, allows you to play Saturn, Neo Geo, CD, PlayStation 1, and Mega CD games. Uh, I think it might support a couple of other systems, too. Um, you put the game in, it gives you extra features on the games, things like um, being able to use save states, and you could buy modules that clipped into the top that would allow you to use, say, Mega Drive and Genesis or Super Nintendo and Famicom cartridges. So you could expand it to play more and more games, which now these consoles are getting on anywhere between like 25 to 30 plus years old. They break down. Uh, especially ones that use optical discs like the PlayStation and the Saturn. How, how many Saturns do you have and how many are broken? I have got enough. <laughs> I have got enough. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> so it sounds really good. Uh, they were coming out for a decent price. It looked like the consoles go come out are about four hundred. Uh, sorry, three hundred pounds, and then these modules were going to be about eighty quid each. You say now that sounds expensive to me. Yeah. It's expensive, um, but for what it did, it certainly seemed justified. Was worth the money. Yeah. Yes. It was again, again, like the analog pocket. It it was maybe not niche as premium. Market, yeah, it's it was... it's a niche product. They're never going to sell this amount of consoles that Microsoft or Nintendo or Sony or shift. Yeah. Um. So they don't have you know the the scale to ramp up and get the prices down. Um. While it's not done look as premium as like analogs offerings, it certainly wasn't, as you said before, just like a cheap Chinese um, retro console. Uh, sorry, yeah. reproduction console. The problem came is when when they was due to release, uh, the price went up uh, four hundred dollars in the US. So yeah, maybe it's gonna be four hundred pounds, still quite a lot, and then eighty dollars per module uh, the modules also came with a controller as well so it weren't too bad if you bought the mega drive module you could then use mega drive games genesis games and you got a six button mega drive controller with it when it came over here i believe it might be the distribution company's fault the price suddenly went up to over 500 pounds for the console Jeez. And £115 per module with additional Jeez. controllers. You want a second Mega Drive controller. They were going for about £45 to £55, depending on the system. Jeez. Now, it's, first of all, you don't need to use their controllers. If you have an original Mega Drive or Super Nintendo controller, you can plug it into the relevant module. You can use your own oh, controller. Okay, so you, you know... You don't. If you want extra people, you can just plug your shit in. Yes, so yes. You don't have and to buy there. You don't have to spend forty five, fifty pounds on a specific controller. No, you don't have to. If you have a Mega Drive controller, you can. You don't have to buy the forty five, fifty pound Mega Drive controller. You can actually use your own. Um, but the price hike was astronomical. Um, it and made it almost no... not worth to do it. Oh, absolutely it's, no. You know, this it, is it, the time... it drove up so much, and even that the niche market that was there all of a sudden gone. Oh, screw absolutely. this! I'm going to pay hundred pound or more for it. I was following this for I think about three years. I was getting really excited. You know, uh, as Phil says, I have a lot of Sega Sands. Um, Just a few, and I have them because I well, know you know, they he... will die 
In fact, one of them has died and has been gutted and is now my PC. Um, <laughs> but they won't last forever. So a new modern console to play these old games is fantastic. It means you're not putting undue wear on the old system. And you're getting a lot of um, newer features like faster loading. Save states. Mm. Yes, save states, um, friends list. I think, I believe they even introduced achievements into some games. Um, plus, new TVs often don't have anything except HDMI. So trying to connect an old RF composite or SCART console up to a new TV is just a rat's nest of cables, oh, adapters. I remember coming across yours once, and I think didn't you have like four different adapters plugged in at once to try and get, yeah. in, get some stuff? I mean, I'm Probably. Not even, I'm not even sure that my tv actually has an aerial port either for what the mega drive would use Might yes no no it'll probably have the port but there's a good chance it won't have a analog tuner in it which means you can't yeah, tune it in. exactly yeah it'll probably only have a digital tuner this premium on price was mainly for the convenience and the quality of life but the price of it was just so high that this console when I heard about it, it seemed made specifically for me. And the price of it, it's it just shot straight up. And at that point, I could buy a PlayStation 5, an Xbox Series X, and still have, you know, okay, if, I, yeah, if I bought yeah. one or two modules, I could easily have like 200, 300 pounds left over on top. Um, now, I did look at it on... Amazon earlier on, and it, as far as I can tell, it's not actually shipped. It was supposed to have shipped, I believe, around May originally, and then the end of summer. So I don't know if they they have been shipped out. I have seen uh, people on YouTube reviewing them who've been sent early. Like um, I don't think they're like pre-production ones, but they are the first batch to review. But I don't know if anyone who's actually purchased ones actually received them yet. But um, Jeez. yeah, I remember you saying as well that I'm because I'm sure you after you spoke to me about this before, and even if you tried to go straight to the supplier, um, you, they wouldn't send it to you, would they? You'd have to. They only sell through Amazon supplier. in the UK at least. Yeah. Like, so you can even go around to try and get the lower prices only literally yes. from there. So from and what I can't. could tell, um, the supplier was shipping them from, if I remember right, Germany. Um, but even compared to the European pricing, if I remember right, I think it was like £499 and then about $450. So again, we were still paying a premium over... Europe, which was paying a premium over what the price in the US was. Jeez. And they were saying, oh, it's because of the cost of shipping them from uh, the manufacturers in China. But <sighs> it just doesn't make sense. It's a shame because, I, honestly, I, I'd have had one of them. If that came out £300 and then £80 for a module, I definitely would have had the console, definitely would have had the Mega Drive. And since I never actually owned one, probably would have picked up something like the Super Nintendo module as well. But, alas, uh, I I don't know what's become with become of them. So, what we say about you say something about the uh, Facebook group with you? Oh yes. <laughs> um, after after pointing all this out and having a little uh, rant on the Facebook group, the exact same rant I've just had there. Um, I've been blocked from the Facebook group. <laughs> Wait, so the Facebook group blocked you because you turned and said to him, why are you making us pay this premium, which is stupid of you said? Yes. I, I actually, my last message on the Facebook group was, this is ridiculous. I could make a console for cheaper than this. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, which, 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 which oddly enough, is where, where my Sega Saturn PC came from. <laughs> <laughs> Just to prove it. Yeah, so, um, there you go. <laughs> for, for less money, for a few hundred pounds, I have a PC that looks like a Sega Saturn console, has a couple of USBs on the front. Um, the power button run... actually does turn it on and off. Yes, yes. Um, reset doesn't do anything, neither does the uh, disc eject, because it hasn't got an optical drive in it. But I can, through something like RetroArch, I can emulate anything up to a PlayStation 2 Dreamcast sort of console. 
Um, I mean, it cost me significantly less. This is definitely something that you probably need to share on somewhere so that people can actually have a look at <laughs> this. Uh, what is that? Like, no, they, check on my yeah, the IO, the IO uh, ports on the back are a little bit rough, so <laughs> I might need still, to clean it up a bit. Still, it's it's almost maybe, maybe do maybe do a version two in the future. It's almost like I have, I have got plenty of uh, sand <laughs> sliding around, and maybe even uh, put it in a Dreamcast. It's it's like we need some sort of uh, some sort of website that people can go to. Yes, uh, and oddly enough, we have one. There's just nothing on there yet. <laughs> but if you'd like to <laughs> go go and uh, keep up to date with our podcast, which quickly seems to be uh, devolving into just some old guy and two slightly younger guys rambling for forty minutes, you've not been rambling. Uh, you can for that. go to retroages.com forward slash retro gaming dads. Or, if we were doing it like they did in the early 2000s, you can visit us on the World Wide Web at <laughs> https colon forward slash forward slash retroages.com forward slash retro gaming dads forward slash index dot html. Uh, the <laughs> Wait, they actually, turned, they actually said the whole Oh, yeah. Oh, do you not remember this? Oh. What? No, no, this is this 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 is no. God forbid you listen to anything on um like BBC Radio. Yeah, geez, no, they, they, they were telling oh, you the no, I... full full file structure of where to go. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So back into the topic of games, we've obviously we've yeah. we've both mentioned games. We've mentioned Streets of Rage. It's similar sort of vein, Battletoads. Brilliant bit oh. of retro inspired gaming. Battletoads, I had a lot of fun with. Um, but I think possibly that was because it is one of the few times I have seen another human being when <laughs> we were in between that, that lockdowns. Is, yeah, yeah. And you two, we did it with lockdowns, and we decided to chuck a. I think wasn't this for my birthday? We tried. I think to, it was. To, you know, squeezing the game a game in night. Uh, of course, we could do. And like you know, saying that it was a great game. I we were all laughing our heads off just because of how funny and ridiculous. Uh, the game turned out to be, especially on the um, the hover bike, hover bike sections, level. yeah. The hover bike section, which I thoroughly enjoyed. I can't forget the hover bike section. Jeez. They were funny, um, but they definitely overstayed the welcome oh, by the end, I felt. Yeah. Yeah. Like, because we were doing the hover bike section, and I was surprised. I thought you two would have been doing well because obviously you've played it before, but yet I seemed, in my opinion, I seemed to be the one that was making the most progress. No, nah, I don't think that was the case. <laughs> I don't think, any I don't think anyone was making any progress, co- any progress in that. <laughs> One thing I will say is I probably have the worst reflex of the three of us because I seem to fall off a lot. Um, but did either of you actually play the game through to completion? No. That's the thing, though. I enjoyed it when we were all together, uh, playing it all together. But then... You know, came back and I did, I did think about downloading it and playing it again, but I was like, oh, I've got other games I could play. So I just, you know, it, if anything, we've stuck mainly on PSO2. So, you know, Battletoads has kind of took a side step because we'd rather play that together, really, wasn't it? Hey, soon, I'm pretty certain we can talk about PSO2 as a retro game. It's been that long. It's, it's, oh, it's it not eight been years? out that long. What are you on about? It yeah. only came out this year. <laughs> well, <laughs> this year on the Xbox. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, wait, no, no. This year over yeah. here, we we did not get it any other means at all. Yeah, exactly. Ah, seven years late. Yeah, but uh, you know what? I I, I thought Super Mario Bros. was taking a couple of years to get over to the West was uh, atrocious. Genuinely, though, I mean, if you look at previous Fancy Star games, they've always been really far behind the the, the Japanese servers, and they end up dying before mm. they all come out. Fair play to Microsoft and Sega; they have very quickly caught yes. up. The Japanese yes. service. Yeah, it's only been a few months, and we've gone from I think episode Microsoft three up to and... episode six. Yeah, something like that. Yes, six. I think you know with Microsoft and Phil Spencer, they have definitely made you know with Sega, definitely made such a good progress, and you know they've they've done a good thing because they brought it over you know to everyone else, and it's if anything, it's revitalised the game for a lot of people who haven't been able to play it before. Yeah. And who have picked it up, you know, is better to bring in a whole new, different, um, you know, a new set of players. 
Thank you. New set of players into the yeah, mix. Yeah, and Microsoft definitely know what they're doing as well because they are literally saying, right, yeah, we're bringing it over here. Yeah, it can go on Steam. Even stuff like Cuphead, they've gone, yeah, it can go on Steam. Yeah, it can go on the PlayStation. That's great. I think Microsoft and Phil Spencer done a good thing in, as, as we were saying, not just PS02, but then other games going to different platforms and you know making it more of a unified Well, it's, you know, it's gaming, probably going to get more and more of that going in the future, isn't it? Obviously, you've got Minecraft at the moment. Well, yeah. But soon you yes. will be having, I would imagine, Fallout. Yeah, and... there's... Elder Scrolls are going to continue and being there is absolutely no way that they are just going to say right we're cutting I reckon it'll probably be delayed they're going to be timed exclusives but there's no way that they're just going to say right we're not putting Elder Scrolls on PlayStation because you're cutting out too big a market there let's be real about that yeah well you if anything it's you know pointing it like putting it to anyone anywhere I think Phil trying to push stuff to go into different devices it's Two things on is on set is one thing of making the unified gaming community and two, you know, more revenue, more places for things to go on to. I've, Do you know what I mean? so, I've been saying this for a while. I think X Cloud is where they're gonna try and push games. They are gonna try and get X Cloud on everything. PlayStation, Switch, yes. the lot. And you know what? May even come to iOS one day. Maybe. We can hope. We can hope. <laughs> I but how good would X Cloud be on the Switch? That'd be amazing. Well, no, I would love to have X Cloud and Switch. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be nice for, say, in the home, but uh, the the issue with the Switch is it's not got all the same controls that you'd have on an Xbox. Mm, true. Specifically, true. the analog triggers. So playing a game like, say, Forza, it'd be a lot more difficult. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Though, I mean, it's just as a as a stepping game, and I think it's definitely where gaming's going. Microsoft have the right idea of trying to transcend consoles and get stuff as services. Game Pass, xCloud, etc. If Microsoft could get um, Xbox game streaming on PlayStation 5 and on the Nintendo Switch, I did absolutely jump on the chance. Yes. So, no, they definitely would do. just before we go then, what are you looking forward to in 2021? Apart from it not being 2020? No, what I'm going to say is it has taught us that Hollywood were right in the middle of a global emergency. Not only will leadership not listen to scientists, but <laughs> the general populace will go out and lick the thing they have been told not to lick. <laughs> yes. And then complain about it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, Hollywood, you were right. Well done. I suppose we should say goodbye to the dumpster fire that was 2020 and <laughs> goodbye to the dumpster fire that has been our first podcast. Everyone yeah. loves the yep. dumpster fire. I, I, I would say surely 2021 can't be any worse. No, don't, don't say it. Don't say it. Oh, why just say it? <laughs> <sighs> Thanks. Thanks, Anthony. Yeah. Thanks. Right. You're welcome. Well, hopefully, if we haven't put you off with our incessant rambling, um, <laughs> we'll see you for our next episode. And all, all the best for 2021. 